Now for the latest in our series, marking a year to go until Britain leaves the European Union. Scotland, of course, voted to stay in the EU in contrast to England. The referendum has prompted a revived debate about Scotland's future. This from our political editor, Brian Taylor. Oh, of course, that's the Brave Hill, so... Yeah. Meet the walkers for yes, off for a hike to explore Edinburgh and to convert anyone they meet. They say Brexit demands an early second referendum on independence. One this year would be good because of all the shambles of, of Westminster. I think we've got to seize the moment when, when uh, the United Kingdom is weak. But here at Holyrood there's a note of caution. Yes, Scotland voted to remain within the European Union and so arguably that might trigger a second independence referendum to allow Scots to choose their own way. But what if Brexit has created a climate of fear which in itself deters Scots from choosing independence? What's been happening while I've been away? Former SNP Minister Alex Neil takes that view. He says delay a referendum for at least three years and use the time to demand new devolved powers and to finalise answers to key independence questions like the currency. We have got to inject much more certainty into the debate on our side the next time. Now, clearly, since the Brexit result, uh, the big issue has been uncertainty. Uncertainty on the outcome of Brexit. Uncertainty on what the final deal will be. Uncertainty on the transition period. So another dose of uncertainty at this stage would actually work against the independent side in another referendum if we hold it too quickly. The writer and commentator Darren McGarvey says it's important to make a clear distinction between Brexit and independence. If we're going to push forward with the argument for Scottish independence, the whole argument needs to change. The whole gradient at which we enter the debate needs to change in recognition, one, that the last time it didn't work, and two, that the circumstances are, as many have said, are materially different. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon has now parked the question until Brexit is clearer. But in March last year, she demanded an independence referendum. Some supporters thought, yes. Others? There was lots of people going, oh, no, again, could we do this again? You know, because of the energy and time and all of that it took. There were many people within the movement going, yes, let's go. Elaine C. Smith chairs the independence convention. She stresses its right to Carcani. She insists all the energy is still there in the campaign, but she acknowledges a potential problem with delays. I think if you leave it too long, then that uh, fire, that um, great mobilising that happened within the wider independence movement throughout Scotland, you don't want that to be crushed or fed up or just fade away. As to numbers, the SNP lost ground in last year's UK general election, although they remain Scotland's largest party. A few polls just after the EU referendum suggested a lead for yes on the independence question. But most polls now suggest no. But the walkers for yes aren't deterred. As regards the timing, I think there'll be a sweet spot. I think it has to be soon. But I think we have to feel our way for the sweet spot, a bit like in Braveheart, where he says, wait and then you go. Brian Taylor, Reporting Scotland.